Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Fly Tying Tuesday. Uh, I've been posting a lot of pictures on my Instagram and uh, Facebook lately of uh, game changers. And I figured I'd throw a tutorial out there on how to tie up uh, one of those. Now, these are a fly, they can be, I mean, 12 inches long if you wanted to. They can be, I've seen some post on Instagram uh, by a couple of people I follow on there. They're the size of like 50 cent pieces. Um, granted, I'll never probably tie one that small, unless, you know, one day I just get bored. But anyways, that's besides the point. But, uh, today we're going to probably make a, roughly about a four and a half, five inch, um, game changer. It's going to be, uh, kind of a shad pattern, or we'll just, it'll be pretty close anyways. Um, but these flies, they're, they're great for all sorts of species, like those little ones you could use for, like, trout and small streams or heck even crappie or big enough bluegill would eat on something like that but I might make mine for mainly like bass um I would probably make some smaller ones for trout maybe like three three and a half inches small streamer sized uh but most of mine are going to be for bass and pike maybe musky um that's something I want to get into maybe a little bit more towards spring. I'll have to get a new rod before then, but it'd be fun to target musky on the fly rod anyways. But uh, let's get into today's tie. First, you're going to start off with a shank. Um, I use these little salmon shanks. That's why I can kind of get my hands on anyways through the shop. These are 10 millimeters. We're actually going to use four of these, and then we're going to use a size one B10S stinger hook. I like the stinger hooks. Um, pretty much for everything almost for my big patterns. But we're going to do four of these. I'll probably end up fast forwarding through maybe the last two, maybe the other three. This one, well, just the last two because I want to show you a full one. This one's going to have the tail and just a partial. Um, but the key thing is to really be able to trim it up right so it's all about the same diameter but first we're gonna use some grizzly saddle we're gonna take about four of these I already plucked mine off since this one's not gonna be very big not gonna make the tail super huge using the feathers for the tail I feel like it gives it a nice little kick especially if you're going to use it like a river or stream, creek, whatever you got flowing water the feather or marabou gives it a nice presentation I feel so we put four of those on there for the tail but you can also use like bucktail, really anything. I've seen people use all sorts of stuff. But we're going to get all that feather wrap down so that way we got a nice base of thread there for our EP brush. We got a partial left over. Should be plenty to do this tail. So I usually lay it about to the eye with these. So that way I can get a nice secure point right there so it's not going to get pulled out when I'm pulling on it. And then what I like to do, use this little guy here, give it a quick whip finish. Let's set that off to the side for now. And then basically what we're going to do so we're just going to twist this around and around, but at the same time you want to push the fibers back. Get them all going one direction so they're all laying towards the back. Make it easier for when we want to brush it out later.
And then on these, I do pretty tight wraps. I don't know. I haven't really been tying them super long, and I haven't watched many videos. I just kind of, I don't know. I just go with the flow. I just see how somebody, you know, does it, the first very part of it, and I'm like, okay, I know what to do from here type thing. <clears throat> so I don't know if I'm, you know, wasting a lot of material doing this, and I don't need to add as much or what, but I think it looks good. Might make it a little heavy or soak up more water, but a couple swings with it, you'll throw a lot of that off. We're going to tie that off there at the eye. And with these, this is actually a wire. That's why it doesn't move very easily. I can bend it and do whatever I want with it, really. Um, so you want to use some junk scissors. I have these real thick ones I use for my wires and stuff like that. Definitely don't want to use your nice ones like tungsten carbides or anything because those things aren't cheap. It's like, I think I paid like $28 for that pair of scissors. But it's kind of, they're, they're nice. And if I just, you know, I'm trimming fibers back and stuff like this, it's going to stay pretty sharp for a very long time. Thread off there. Now what we're gonna do? Throw some UV on there. Good old golf. This is the stuff to use, really. I mean, uh, it's the classic. Don't get the fat man. Fat man's good for like putting on eyes and bulking heads and stuff. But get the classic for stuff like this. It's real thin. But loon, that stuff is so tacky. I don't really like it. Everything wants to stick to it forever. Um. And like with the golf, I switched to that a long time ago. I think I still got some ice jigs made up. Like when I was using the loon, all my jigs would stick together. And since I switched to golf, they all come out single. They don't stick together, they're all separated. So I switched it up from then on. It's not tacky. It stays real glossy for a long time. I think it's just as strong. But way better product. And I have it in many colors. Like there's motor oil, fluorescent pinks, orange, chartreuse. Like there's ambers, black. They have a glow in the dark. Which I haven't messed with it too much. But to me, honestly, it doesn't seem like it glows that hard. But it glows. Oh, I gotta add the. I gotta hit myself there. Gotta add the UV finish. Just a light layer over the threads. Don't need a lot. And then now we're gonna brush it. Then we're gonna trim this one way down because it's the back end of the tail. Alright, we got all this extra. I'm just gonna trim some of that out. that pretty circular kind of cone shaped on the way back I'm actually gonna make it even smaller give it another quick brush and yes 
Yes, this makes a huge mess. <laughs> That's our tail. So while it's still on the vise, I'll put my other shank in. Well, that's kind of what the tail's looking like right now. Still needs trimmed up a little bit now I get it off the vise and I can see it better. Well, that's our tail. And then this part's just going to keep on getting bigger and bigger. It's going to have a shed shaped profile. Hard to get these little guys in the vise. Gotta get it super tight. There we go. And then basically, we're gonna keep on adding these uh, EP fibers all the way down. We're gonna stay with this one is one and a half inch um, until we get to the final hook part. We're gonna use the three. Um, it's thicker, fluffier, so I can trim it down and have a nice bulk style head on it. I don't really like wasting, so I'll probably use this too. Even though there's like two inches left. Nice tight wraps, get that shank to get down. I try to try to keep them pretty parallel with each other so they're not curving from side to side. That way the materials don't slip as easy. Alright. Probably only be able to do a couple wraps with this one, but I don't feel like wasting it. I'll just leave the thread there instead of whip finishing it. I think I might hear soon in these next couple videos show you guys how to make a couple ice jigs and I am actually not going to be making ice jigs anymore um like other than for like really friends family and basically like very few people I'm going to make them for just because I don't want to get into that tedious work all the time I'm enjoying tying these bigger flies more and they're just more worth my while, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, but I am going to show you how I make mine. That way you can buy the little material. Like, basically, if you can, like, get a... They make, I think we got some, like, $9 vices at the shop. The real basic. It just comes with a clamp. It doesn't have a nice base, like this one here does that's like lead and it's heavy but um it just comes with like a little c clamp you screw it to the table you put little pieces of cardboard there that's why i used to do it first too so it didn't scuff up the nice desk i was using but um 
You can get just one of those. You'll need a pair of scissors. You'll need a whip finisher, um, a bobbin. Your choice of threads. It would be nice to have two bobbins. You don't have to get a nice, nice one like this. You can get like a three dollar one and it's just fine. And then you need to get some golf UV resin because basically all you're doing is layering colors of thread and putting some of the golf UV resin on there and you'll buy the tungsten beads for your weight. Or if you just want lead, you can do lead wraps underneath. You can also, with that stuff, make like black ants and real basic flies. And it's just simple. But it's a lot more fun catching something like fish on something you made rather than buying whatever somebody else is making, I guess. It's, I don't know. It's just more fun. You feel like you're part of it a little bit more. Fly tying isn't just, you know, trying to save money on lures or trying to make a profit or whatever you're trying to do with it. It's an art. It's a hobby. It's something to pass time. I mean, it's just all around fun. And catching fish on something you made, it's pretty darn cool. It's a good feeling. That's what got me hooked. And I've been doing it for a few years now. Just continue to make these real tight, tight wraps. And on the next two, I'll just fast forward it. So you don't have to hear me rambling on about nonsense. Sitting there making the video, video last forever. You gotta have patience for tying these too, because it ain't quick. The big ones I've been tying, they take me anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. Got some of the eye there. I'll show you those big ones here in a second. Just in case you haven't seen the pictures that I posted. You're curious to what it's actually going to look like. I got bigger versions of them. I got one in like an olive chartreuse. Um, and then I got one that's a shad. Basically how I figured out how to make one is I just bought one and kind of looked at it for a few minutes and I'm like oh okay I've seen this material you know I know what hook I want to use for it this is a one that I bought it was the last one we had left I'm like you know what might as well buy it see if I can figure out how to make one myself if I can at least I got this one but I bought that one for the shop. We were ordering some from a guy out of Columbus, Ohio, and 
now I'm just gonna start making them myself. And this was like a shad one. There's a hook in the back, hook in the front, a little bit longer, a lot bigger. Ours is probably gonna stop about here. But, you know, you add the little, you can just take a sharpie, add color to it that way. And something a little bit different. I wanted something that's a little bit skinnier profile, more like a bass, and then I colored the back black. Um, the reason being, you know, after pike or musky, you know, they might eat smaller bass like this. And bass that are, you know, this size and length are typically just, you know, little narrow little guys. So that's why I kept that one kind of skinny. That and I'm sure a bass would still eat it too. We'll get back to this one. So I forget that dried on there. Call this out. that other shank I'll we'll just fast forward through all this until we get to the end then we'll probably talk about the head a little bit more Well guys, I messed that one up. So, I'm at the end. 
after this part when I, I guess I shut off my phone <laughs> and uh, that's what I had running my GoPro and kind of dropped the ball there so you didn't get to see the fast forward and through the rest of that but anywho so what I did was back here I added a uh, fishing line so what I did is on the base of the hook before I tie any of my materials on what I did was uh, took about a foot of 17 pound test just my little filament just trialing what I got laying around whatever um, I doubled it over so I took it and made a loop out of it and I tied the two sections on the two tag ends on and then I'll slide that bead on through the loop and then I put the tail eyelet through that loop and then what I do is take that loop and put it back through the bead so it kind of snakes through the bead through the eye back through the bead and then you secure it down to the shank and tie the rest of your line back on there and what I do to get that line to stay extra secure when I like snip it off I melt the ends of it and I tie into the melted plastic so that way it's like in there in there um, then after that all I did was I had about this, I'd say roughly this much, about six, seven inches of a foxy brush left in the three inch. I used three inch on this section and this section. Um, if I got to here in the video, I'll drop a little side note. That's where I went to three inches at. And then I uh, built it up, you know, with that little bit, cut it down to a little bit bigger than this part. And then this part, I will leave it even longer so it has a nice body going with it um and you know now we're here <laughs> i just whip finished uh tied off right here and i'm gonna add some uv resin brush it out trim it and then we're gonna add the fish skull But I believe this wet for now. Because once I put my fish skull on, I'll use UV on that too, and I'll get it all at once. And one of the final steps here crystal head I got a size eight and a half what you do with these make sure I can fit her on there good oh yeah that'll be perfect what I'm gonna do is put some UV resin inside the skull here pretty big glob on top and bottom just get that to stick in there all that resin is going to kind of come out a little bit Get it nice and straight. You know what, let's give it a quick brush. Make sure we get this hair in the direction that we're wanting it to before they're all kind of stuck in place by the base. Next, what we're going to do is find a good spot behind its head here, but on both sides. Shads have these little black dots sometimes here. You see it on a lot of lures, so I just like to add a fracture pizzazz to also show people, you know, 
can make flies like glimmer. A lot of people I've even seen can like have airbrushed their flies. I'm gonna just take this silver and go down the back part of the spine. And just adds a little extra pizzazz to it. More or less for myself rather than the fish, but it does make it look even more realistic. I've got sharp yellow over my fingers. And that's our final product. This here is the game changer. No blatant chocolate does about the best one, I think. I don't know if this is 100% correct, but I think he is the originator of it. Don't quote me on that. And now it has that nice gray back, that black dot. Folds back and looks like a fish. Oh, I forgot one most important part. Boy, makes it even look more realistic. Got my living fish eyes. These are eight and a half millimeter to go with my eight and a half head. Fits almost perfectly into the little eye socket. I just take some zappa gap, set it in place, and I'll take like the blunt end of my scissors and just press on the head a little bit everywhere. Alright, now it looks a little better. It's just gonna swim through the water. Pretty cool, pretty cool fly. Lure, whatever you want to call it. Add those eyes, give it that gray back, black dot character. It's a good looking fly. Just give you a rough estimate. I said, I think earlier I said it was going to be like four and a half, five inches. I don't remember. But see how long it is. That is about four and three quarters. So it said four and a half, five inches, right in between. Add that one to this collection. Well, I'll see you guys next week on a Fly Tying Tuesday episode. And actually, maybe by next week, I might have a fishing video for you guys as well. Um, buddy's coming back from the Navy, like I said in the last video. And we're going to go fly fishing. Try to catch some brooks, browns, and rainbows. So, we'll see how that goes. We'll let you know if we catch anything. Um... If we don't, then I'll let you know in one of these episodes and not bore your time with a video with no fish. See you guys next time.